Hi, I'm Mary McIntyre and this video is going to show you a time lapse of me doing some lunar sketching. Today I'm working from a photograph but the principles that I use when I'm sketching um, from a photograph are exactly the same as if you want to do this at an eyepiece. Um, the great thing about doing it from a photograph is you can do it inside where it's nice and warm and not at silly o'clock. Um, the picture that I'm working from today was actually taken by somebody using the Liverpool telescope via the National Schools Observatory and the reason this particular picture interested me is because I've sketched this region before but under a different moon phase. One of the things I love about lunar sketching in particular is the crater shadows and the shapes that the craters make with the differing sun angles. The crater chain that I'm going to, I'll drop the picture in so you can see it, but the, the crater chain that I'm doing today is Ptolemaeus, Alphonsus and Arzakel. It's a chain of three craters that are a very popular subject for photography. I photographed it um, myself during first quarter phase. This particular picture is during last quarter, so the crater shadows are coming from a different side because the lighting angles from the opposite side on the moon. And the things I'm using today, this is a basic black sketch pad, which you can pick up at any art shop or craft shop. Um, I don't use anything special other than black paper. My favourite pencil, pencils to do this with are the Carbothello by Stabilo. Um, I use the coloured ones of these when I'm doing solar sketching, but for lunar work I mostly just use the black and the white one. You can see these are really well used. Um, these are definitely my favourite ones to work with. But I also have some artists' um, charcoal pencils to work with. And I've recently got these as well, which are a set of pastels, which are just basically lots of shades of grey from, through from black to white. And these are really useful for kind of adding features later on. The way that I get started is to very roughly mark out where, only with a gentle hand, because if you do it wrong you can then rub it out and start again, but if the terminate is visible in the photograph then you roughly mark out where that is, and then I very vaguely mark out the outline of where the craters are. Everything that's then on the illuminated side of the moon gets a really soft layer of white, just kind of very gentle pastel, just rub it all in. So all the illuminated side then you have a kind of light grey basis to work from, and then the black side of the moon will be just black paper. And then what I do is I mark out the harsh bright white regions that are highlighted and also then the crater shadows that are really dark. And that is one of the things I most love about lunar observing is looking at those crater shadows and the things that they can tell you about the, the terrain with that sun angle. So I do the really black bits and the really white bits and everything else from there on is just shades of grey. So you can kind of work your way around. If you're doing it from a photograph, don't be afraid to zoom in to try and see better detail but remember to zoom out again because I've done that myself where you zoom in to get detail and then forget to zoom out and then half your pictures at a totally different scale from the other half so that's just one of the things that I've learned as, uh, as I've gone on with this. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you a picture of what I'm going to work from as I said at the beginning and then I'm going to move the camera over here and zoom in on my hands and then you can just basically see a time lapse of um, how I would do this particular sketch. Then when I'm finished I'll photograph the sketch and then I'll drop that in at the end of the video so you can see the final result. Hopefully you'll learn something and it'll inspire you to have a go. Um, the Liverpool Telescope has got a huge gallery of observations that you can work from if you don't want to do this at the eyepiece. Um, plus the astronomy community in general will let you use their photographs if you want to. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video and say have a go at doing this because it's really good fun.